So I'm out of frame today because I'm uh, going to show a few differences in the Panasonic Lumix GH setup and as of two weeks ago I have a GX6 which is rather exciting and so I figured I'll go over a few things that have changed and today we start with the power delivery and um, that already changed drastically with the GH5 Mark II and um, so we'll, we'll have a quick look and see how, how things are working out with, uh, with that. So when the GH5 Mark II came out, this little thing, we got new batteries first of all and the old uh, BL F19 pack, that's this one, um, was uh, 1860 milliamps, 14 watt hours, um, and we still, the Panasonic came sort of to the end of what they could do with that. So they changed to, with the GH5 Mark II, to the uh, BLK22, which is this. And that has 2,200 milliamps and 16 watt hours. For the GH5 Mark II, that made very little difference. Um, you can use both battery pa battery packs in in the GH5 Mark II. You can also use either or battery pack in the GH6. But there's a difference because if you take the GH6 take out and you put the old GH5 battery pack in there so we, you get this menu then the following menus are limited to depending on better use rec quality and variable frame rate and what it basically does um, for example the there are certain modes that are disabled so if we go in here and we go say menu and go up here, red quality, and then we go up and all the 5 5.8, 5.7, 4.4, 4K120, uh, all those modes are disabled and also full HD 240. What it actually does, it limit, uh, also variable bitrate is limit to um, 60 FPS. It limits all rates to no more than 4K and no more than 60 FPS. And that's basically the limit in the GH6 when you run of the older GH5 battery. Um, that's basically what, what that is. So we take that out again. Those limitations didn't exist in the GH5 Mark II, but they do in the GH6. So the other thing we got with the, and that came with the GH5 Mark II already, is we got a new charger that is powered by USB-C and we got a USB-C port in the camera and this supports PD power delivery. Now, you can take, you need nine volt three amp for this. And if you don't have that from your power, from your power bank, and let's do this here, I'll, let's say for example, I'll stick the, uh, stick a cable in the, uh, in the port there, that's a normal USB port, quick charge port, right? And then let's take a um, cable in the USB-C port. And what it does, it says USB, USB power is supplied from the connected device. Please turn off the power when charging. And what it basically means is that, as you, as you actually can see, um, I know it's up, upside down there but it is drawing power. So what, what it basically says, it is powering the camera from the battery bank, but it can't charge the battery at the same time. 
um, because there isn't uh, there isn't enough current to do that. So uh, that's 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 the problem. Now you have it's very very hard to see, but over the battery there's a little power plug, and that tells you it takes power from from the charger. So if I go now. and plug this into a power bank that can deliver 9 volt 3 amps that's the requirement so if I now take a USB-C cable hang on for a second I'll show you this and I plug that into a uh, power bank and the power bank I have here is an Anker Power Core Plus uh, PD 45 watt so that can supply 9 volt 3 amps on the USB-C port so we'll uh, plug this in here and what you can see on the camera is that it has this little charging logo but it didn't come up with the message that said you have to power turn off the camera to charge the battery and that's because it is now both powering the camera and it's charging so that that that's actually really really good and that has also been brought over to the G6 so that's no problem there at all so with a with a PD power bank that's capable of at least 30 watts which is what your 9 volt 3 amp are you will be able to charge and power the camera at the same time so that's that's great um, the other thing that I need to mention is that you cannot operate the camera without a battery being in it. But if you plug this in on PD power and there's no battery in the camera, it will not turn on. Um, that's simply not possible. We can show that. So we take the battery out, leave it out entirely, plug USB C in. nothing happens so that does not work you can't do that so if you want to eliminate the battery and that's also this is still the same on the GX, GX6 so if you want to eliminate the battery then you have to opt for a battery eliminator so that's what you do then and traditionally what you did was you um, plug the battery eliminator in and then here at the front it's a little flap so you route your cable in here there and then you are able to close close the battery lid so that's that's basically how that is okay now This is a standard F2TP battery eliminator that I bought on uh, Amazon. I will leave a link for this down below. This is particular as a PD one. So with the GH6, things have changed a little bit. So what we do here is we, we disconnect this. And I'll take the, um, take the battery out. Okay battery eliminator goes in and there is no more connector for battery grip there will be no battery grip option for the GH6 which is maybe sad maybe not um, but it's not really needed anymore because you can power it from the USB battery bank so what, what we have instead is we have this little, this little round flap here and then you route your cable to that and then you close your lid and that's how they've solved the issue on the G6. Now, if we plug this in, so like this, and then power the camera up, everything is perfect. It knows that I put a battery eliminator in there, it has full power, 
and uh, there is no limitations of any 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 kind. Um, if I go into the rec quality, I have all modes. So the battery eliminator is still the way to go if you want to remove your battery entirely. And that's the options for powering on the, on the Panasonic GH6 and GH5 Mark II. Um, for the GH6 it's now even more important because the older batteries won't allow you all modes. I'll be adding a few more GH6 videos over the next couple of days. There's very interesting changes that have been made in the lineup. If you go all the way back to the GH4, which really was the first 4K recording mirrorless body um, out there. Um, this was amazing. The GH5 has lasted us many years. GH5 Mark II brought the streaming, which we unfortunately don't have in the GH6, but there's many, many other things that have been added. So uh, I'll be covering them over the next couple of days. Thank you. And please um, leave a like if this was useful, um, and maybe subscribe, and I'll see you another day.